All right, this week, first up. Okay, first up, we've got this little adapter. Um, this is for the Quick 861. It's a very, very nice hot air system that we've got. Um, only thing that's a little annoying is it uses um, hot air tips that are not compatible with like, the low cost ones. Uh, this little adapter, uh, it's a couple bucks, and you put it onto the 861 hot air gun, and it lets you use the low cost hot air tips we carry a pack of 10 that has like qfn and like 100 qfp pins and all like everything um makes it easy to do large packages uh, so you don't have just like the wound uh nubs on the end of your hot air station okay next up next up we've got uh some chalk breakouts so uh we have done lots of keyboard projects and if you um have used any of our keyboard breakouts or macro pads, whatever, you know that we tend to use the MX, uh, Cherry MX compatible switches and sockets. Um, but some people want something thinner. So if we go to the overhead, I'll show the difference. Yeah, I'll show some of these. So this is, yeah, go, the, we'll, go we'll get back to them. We'll get back to them. Okay. So this is um, the, well, let me get this out of the way. I love you keep, but it's a little confusing to see it. Um, so this is like, you know, our, uh, feather wing with Neo key and it's got two MX switches and you see they're quite tall. There's two different keycaps. This one's kind of like the shortest keycap you can get. This is going to a standard keycap, but it's very tall. A lot of people want something nice and short. So this is the chalk by comparison. So it's like, um, you know, definitely more than less than half the height of the MX. It's a very, very slim style and the keycaps are very slim. So if you want like a low, you know, laptop keyboard like key height, um, the chalk switches are where it's at. They're totally incompatible in every way from the MX, which is the keycaps. You can't use MX with chalk or chalk with MX. The keys are totally different. You can't use them in different sockets. So this is a completely separate breakout um, just for chalk switches and I'll show um, even on the bottom, the socket is totally different than the socket that we use for MX switches. You can see the two sockets here. But, um, you know, so we made a little breakout, you know, to account for all the differences. So you can quickly breadboard uh, chalk projects. Another thing uh, just to note compared to the MX breakout, these breakouts are one row taller. So they're 0.1 inch taller, longer because of the way that the socket um uh, fit for, um, having the Neo, uh, the, sorry, having the socket, um, fit on the PCB because it has to fit a little bit higher. I had to like extend the circuit board. So just FYI, it's, it's, even though it looks just like the Neo key for the MX, it's like a totally different, um, configuration and a totally different, uh, pinout, uh, the pinout's the same, but totally different PCB size. So let's go back to the, oh, the yes, the photos. Um, okay. So that's the demo. You can connect as many of them as you want. They come with diodes built in. So, uh, if you would like to have an array of them, go to town, um, they're diode connected. There's also a little reverse mount NeoPixel, a socket, uh, we stock both the clicky and linear, uh, chalk switches, but of course you can use any chalk compatible. Um, NeoPixel shines through and then breakouts on the left and right that connect the NeoPixel input output the NeoPixel power and ground, and then the switch anode and cathode. It goes through a diode, so that's why it's labeled anode and cathode. Okay, and then the start of the show tonight, besides you, Lady Ada, our team, our customers, our community is... Da, 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 da. Um, okay, with the ANO Rotary, so that's the name of the rotary encoder. It's, it's the part number is called ANO, uh, so that's why it's called ANO. The uh, rotary encoder with Seesaw. So this is, you know, we've had this encoder for a bit. I love it because it's basically iPod classic rotary encoder where you've got the little uh, click wheel in the center. It's a rotary encoder and then up, down, left, right, and select. But uh, the thing that's a little annoying about it is there's five buttons and two encoder pins and it's a lot of pins. And before you know it, you're like, I've just used half of my Mac controller, GPIO. And, you know, you're constantly pulling the um, encoder. And so why not make it a lot easier for people by making a breakout board? where on the back is an ATtiny 816, the little um, AVR chip, and it, you know the code is up on GitHub. If you'd like to take a look at how it does this, it can 
keep track of the encoder so it just keeps a little counter of how many clicks left or right it can read the buttons and it can also uh, have four different address select switches you can theoretically have 16 of these all over i squared c three or five volts um, so it's very easy for you to connect this up to your raspberry pi which doesn't even have rotary encoder support or other single board computer you can connect it up uh, to an Arduino, you can connect it up to a Pico, you can connect it up to pretty much any mic controller, as many as you like. Uh, you can even connect it to a computer um, by going through one of our uh, dev boards or uh, one of our USB to GPIO converters that runs circuit Python. Um, and on board is a little Seesaw chip and uh, there is an IRQ output if you'd like, but it also works just great over I squared C as long as you don't mind asking it every once in a while, hey, are there any buttons pressed or any uh, rotary encoder? Um, clicks going on and uh, that's it that's the new product I can you can show the little demo yeah video so this is just uh, the hand and you can see it's uh, plugged into a seven segment display and then you know it just counts up and down as you click the rotary encoder that's your products Ooh.